Hello everybody and welcome to another bar video. Today we're going to be looking at the lobby system as well as the launcher, uh, all the settings and stuff like that. So let's get straight to it. So when you open up the bar uh, shortcut on your desktop, you're going to be met with this screen. Now there's a few things you'll need to know. Uh, if you click on this config in the top right, you'll see alpha, alpha no C and D, engine test and dev lobby. Uh, there used to be some different options here, but nowadays you don't really need to touch this at all unless you're specifically helping out with the dev testing. So if you see you're set to anything other than just alpha, uh, put it back unless you know what you're doing. But if you know what you're doing, you're not watching this video, so leave it at alpha. Um, next bit we're going to be looking at is uh, there's a couple of buttons on here. Um, the next one for us to pay attention to is the one that says open install directory. If we click on that, it's going to open where you have bar installed. Uh, now you may want this for a couple of reasons. Uh, first thing, if you want to grab your screenshots from in game, you're going to want to click on that and then you can go to screenshots. Um, another thing you may need it for is uh, replays. Uh, I'll show you how to go and do all that a bit later. Um, and then also if the bar devs need your hand with any troubleshooting, uh, then this is where they may ask you to go. Next thing uh, is the toggle log option. You may be asked for this. You click toggle, toggle log and it will have this appear and you can just copy and paste this into a text file and send it across or just post it straight to Discord. And the last bit of this is the button that says update. Sometimes when you go to launch this game, uh, it may need an update. If it does, it's automatically going to say update. However, if you're in a game and your game crashes and there's been an update out whilst the game is running, you may need to make sure your game doesn't update. To do this, just untick the tick box that says update and that will allow you to launch the game straight away without any updating um, and then that way you'll be able to rejoin the game that was in progress uh, and get back to the game without having any issues okay so now we've done that uh, we're just going to click start and we're going to go straight in okay so here we are in the main part of the lobby system now on the left here you can see single player multiplayer co-op replays and help so first things first we're going to go straight to single player and in single player, there are a couple of options that you can go through. We have skirmish, scenarios, and load. We'll go through them from the top first. So skirmish, now skirmish is a uh, open skirmish. It's, you can completely change the settings, change how many AI you wanna go against, if you want them to be on your team. Uh, this will be set up the exact same way you would set up a multiplayer game. Uh, the only difference is that you won't have some of the options that you see in the multiplayer lobby, um, such as locking and unlocking a battle, because you don't need to do that. Um, but in terms of changing a map and adding teams, they're all there. And all you would do is select them all and just click the start button, and that would get you straight into a game. Now, to configure all this properly, we're going to go through that in the multiplayer one and get it all out of the way in the same time. So if you don't know how to do those, stick around for the multiplayer section. Next bit, scenarios. Now scenarios are some predefined missions. It's the closest thing Bar has to a campaign at the moment. And you can go through, choose one, they're in order of difficulty. And when you select one, so we're just gonna pick one here. Uh, you'll be met with this screen. We'll give you a bit of information about what you need to do as well as difficulty and faction choice. And then you will always make sure you read the bit at the bottom that gives you some tips there on how to complete it. Once you've done all that, click start scenario and you're off. Okay, next section, load game. Now this section isn't currently available as such as the saved games feature doesn't work at the moment. Now with single player covered, we're gonna move on to replays. Now if you click the replays button, you will see all of the replays of any games that you've currently played, including anything in single player. To start one of these scenarios, all you need to do is click the start button. And these are all the scenarios located in the demos folder in your install directory. Now, if you want to get any replays from games that you haven't played in, uh, say for example, you want to look at the 1v1 final from the tournament and see what both players did. 
Uh, you go and click the download button, which opens up the bar's website. And then what it will do is uh, it will open to the replay section. From here, you can see every game that has been played and you can search for a replay. You can filter by player, by game type, um, and by date range. Once you have found the replay you want, you click on it, and then you hit the download button. Once your file is downloaded, you copy the file into the demos folder, and then when you go back to the replays section, there will be a refresh button. You hit the refresh button that will then bring the new replay up okay now moving on to multiplayer and co-op select battle list and now we have all of the lobbies that are currently open for the game now there are some filters at the bottom for password friend running and locked if we quickly turn these off uh, we will see a whole bunch of lobbies that are currently not accessible to us and you'll see some different colors here purple is passworded red is locked blue is empty yellow is in progress and green is open and the game hasn't started yet and there's there's players in there so generally um, you're probably going to be joining either a lobby that is green or a lobby that is blue um, unless you're wanting to spectate then obviously you want to jump in one of these games that are already in progress okay so we're just going to find an empty server here for us to do testing with and here we go we jumped into this server here first thing we're going to need to do just quickly is we're going to lock it you can lock it by clicking the lock button there lock makes it so that no one else can join the room while you're making changes or if you want to have just you and your friend in you can lock, open the room, let them jump in, and then lock it again so that no one else can get in. To unlock a room, click the unlock button. Now, the next thing you want to do is set what kind of game you want to play. So to do that, use the preset option here and select the game type you want to play. For example, we're going to do co-op versus AI. So you would click the co-op option. Okay, and that changes all the preset settings to that. If you want to change the amount of team size, you can select it from here. Next thing we want to do is pick a map. Now this is the map screen and all these bars along the top are filterable so you can change the sort by type, terrain, size and name. You can also use the search feature to find a specific map, for example, Requiem Outpost. The next thing to check here is you can see this button adds teams. If you want to add an additional team for let's say a freeway uh, FFA uh, or if you wanted to do, you know, or, uh, four teams of two or four teams of four or something like that um, then you may need to add additional teams with that function next thing for us to look at here is the start boxes on the map as you see on the map there there's two gray boxes we currently have two teams so there's two spot start boxes and you can adjust these by these buttons underneath the map these uh, indicate the start boxes and their positions and the plus and minus allow you to manually add and remove a start box. Now you can also adjust these start boxes manually by clicking in the bottom right hand corner where there's a little line uh, and you can drag these to whatever size you want making it quite useful for doing some custom shenanigans. Now if you want to reset them you can use the split start boxes option and move that bar to wherever is accurate all of these split the start boxes to a certain degree but this one splits it straight down the middle and you can go all the way up to 50 percent so you can spawn anywhere on either half of the map now the next thing to get you started on is the ai now there are a bunch of different ais and as you see here we have to pick one uh, and this will be that player so at the top we have barbarian ai these are the most skilled and hardest AI that Bar has to offer. They can be customized by selecting the cogwheel before you select the AI. So if we go ahead and click the cogwheel here, we will see what options we can give to the Barb AI. So we've got line of sight vision, enables global line of sight. This means they'll be able to see anything anywhere. Uh, merge neighbor barbarians um, this basically means that if there are two ai commanders that spawn too close to each other uh, they will just work as one unit instead so you may end up seeing 
uh, two commanders that are red, for example, uh, and they will both be working together rather than as individual entities. Uh, disabled units, this you can physically disable individual units. Uh, we don't worry about load game config. And then the difficulty profile, this is how you adjust how difficult the AI is. Once we've done that, you click on the Barbarian AI and it will add it with all those settings. Now, the other AIs, we have Simple AI, Simple Defender, Simple Constructor. Now, these are basic AIs. They're probably where you're going to start off with. As you would expect, a Defender-based AI will do mostly defending and a Constructor one is going to mostly just build a bunch of stuff. Um, and then the Simple AI is the most well-rounded of the simple ones. Next is the Scavenger Defense and Raptor Defense AIs. These are both the AIs for the special game modes that are wave defense style. You only need to add one of these per game mode to the game in order for it to work. You can play as both of these. So if you're playing with your friends, all you need to do is add one of these AIs that starts the game mode. And then you join the team with the scavengers, for example, and have your friends on the other team. And then you will get to play as the scavengers versus them instead, which might make for a bit of a fun Friday evening. Next, we have the inactive AI. This AI is purely for testing. Um, so you don't need to worry about this at all uh, unless you want to, you know, mess around, try some builds out. Uh, you might need to put this in so that the game doesn't automatically finish. And lastly, we have the control mode AI. This is for the control point game mode, uh, which is currently in development. Okay, now that's done. The last thing for us to look at in the lobby here is the advanced options. Now there's quite a lot of options in here for us to go through. So we're just going to briefly go over what's available on each tab. So we start here with the other tab. Now this is everything from water level on the map, is it lava, um, starting metal energy, so on and so forth. Uh, there's a couple of things here for you maybe to notice is the anonymous mode. This is useful for free for alls if you don't want people to know who each other is so you can't like snipe one person in particular everyone will just be question marks and then it makes it a bit fairer in free for alls next tab we have is scavengers this is how you can adjust the difficulty for scavengers as well as a bunch of other settings and similarly we have raptors for again the settings for raptors the next tab we have is a very fun tab called multipliers this changes everything about all the units in the game weapon ranges health damage um, including even your income multipliers um, this cannot be done in minuses so everything starts from one and goes up so this is very fun to play around with and there are specific game modes which we'll go through a little bit later where this changes all of this for you um, and randomizes it to, to give you a fun crazy game to play. Next tab we have is the control tab. This again is for the control point mode which is still being worked on. Next we have restrictions. This is for restricting units so if you want a game with no tech 2 or tech 3, no nukes, uh, you can do that. Just come in here, tick the boxes, problem solved. If you want to make a game mode that only has 100 units, you can do that. Come in here, change that. One thing to note, buildings also count as units. So if you are changing this setting, just bear that in mind. And the last tab is experimental. This is where you go if you want to turn on things like the Legion faction. Or if you want to test out the new commander changes or Umbercom, for example. Or if you want to enable scavenger units. Um, which if you've played the scavenger game mode you will know what they are once you have made all the changes you want to make click apply and this will transfer all the settings into the lobby the next thing we have to discuss is chat commands now there are still some things you need to do by manually typing stuff in and there are buttons for that and the first thing you're going to need to do before you can do any of these commands is give yourself boss of the room to do that, type exclamation mark boss followed by your name. 
press enter and this will then make you aware that the boss mode has been enabled for you. Now these next commands I'll go through pretty quick. There is the gatekeeper command. This enables you to set the room specific to friends only. Obviously if you want to do that you can do that. If you want to leave it open don't worry about it. I personally have never used this. Um, next command is rename. If you want to rename your room to change it to be whatever you want, type dollar sign rename and then space and then whatever your name is for the room. And after that, we have welcome message. If you want to make a welcome message uh, for your room, type dollar welcome hyphen message space and then your message. It doesn't have to be bracketed or anything like that. It just knows what you want. Then when a player joins your room, a pop-up comes up, not really a pop-up, but a message comes up in the chat on the right-hand side and it gives them the message. If you're a streamer or a content creator and you want to link your Twitch stream, for example, you can put a message in there saying, hey, come join my stream. Or if you're doing a specific game mode, for example, like you're doing a meme one, you could explain what memes you are doing in there. And then the last command for us to talk about is the meme command. You type dollar meme and press enter. That will give you a couple of options. As we see here, the options are ticks, no defense, greenfield, poor, rich, hard T1, crazy, undo and deathmatch. Undo obviously undoes all the meme changes. And for example, we're just gonna type exclamation mark, uh, not exclamation mark, we we'll type dollar meme crazy and it will just randomly pick a bunch of things for us. Now you can go in afterwards and change these settings manually in the advanced options as I showed earlier on. So just bear that in mind. And that's it in the lobby section. Let's go back to the main menu here and we can see uh, on the right hand side now uh, that you've got the welcome section. That is the general news for the bar uh, and everything from tournaments and stuff will be posted there. We have the chat. The main channel here in chat is linked into the main channel of Bar Discord, as well as the newbie channel is linked into the Mentor Academy program. Uh, so if you're a new player and have questions, you can ask in either of those channels and someone will help you out. After that, we have the friends tab, which is obviously where you add friends and you can talk to them and stuff. Settings is for lobby settings, um, not game settings, just the lobby. And then finally, we have the download section. Uh, this is where you will have a list of your maps that you're downloading or, for example, uh, older versions of the game. For example, if you're watching a really old replay, you can see the progress of them there. Um, only other thing you might need to know is the key keys button at the top. If we click on that. It will show you all of the keys for the game. Uh, which will be useful for you to know and you can just close that with the button at the top right and uh, that's it um, I hope this has been useful for you uh, I did have an older version of this but then the lobby changed so here's an updated version for you all and thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time